At the start of this year, I was a husk of a man, completely useless, with a massive gap in my motorcycling history because I'd never ridden the Yamaha 998cc inline four of the crossplane crank, as featured in the MT10 and the R1. And it is, believe me, one of the best engines you can buy in any motorbike. So I bought one. I bought this Yamaha MT10 SP, but me being me, I bought the SP because I'm a bit of a tart. It costs two and a half thousand pounds more than the basic MT10, but did I make the right choice? That's what we're here today to find out. In this video, I'm going to be directly comparing the MT10 versus the SP on British roads to find out if buying the fancy one was the biggest financial mistake that I've made since selling my Apple shares in 1999 and then spending the money on a Turkish hair transplant. That worked out well. At the moment in the UK, an MT10 SP will set you back 16 and a half thousand pounds, whereas the normal MT10 is a smidge over 14 grand. But you can get kind of winter discounts on one of these at the moment and get it a bit cheaper. So what do you get for your money going from that to this? Well, very quickly, the obvious one is the Erlin's semi-active electric suspension with spool valve technology for faster responses and all that sort of guff. Um, yeah, it looks very pretty and you can change the suspension modes electronically on the fly between soft and firm and medium and you can manually go in and say I want more support on the exit of the corner, the entries for corner or whatever. It's genius, but will it make a difference? We'll find out in a minute. You also get braided front brake lines. The brakes are a weak point of this bike, so those we'll find out again. Do they make a difference? You also get black brake levers. Very nice. You also get a few other bits of trinketry. You get a belly pan on the SP. You also get contrast stitching on the seat, a gold chain, blue wheels, this orgasmic colour scheme. Frankly, I love it. But most importantly, you get a polished swing arm, which looks absolutely amazing, apart from the fact mine is covered in frog intestines because it's autumn. But anyway, do all these changes add up to make a tangible difference out on the road? Let's find out and ride them. Right, to start with, I'm going to hop on the non-SP MT10, the basic one, which is a bit of a silly thing to say, to see just what the basic MT10 package feels like before we get onto the differences between this and the daddy, the SP, my one. But anyway, I'm going to head down a local road that I know. It isn't going to be a 10 tenths sort of ride because it's autumn, the roads are wet, covered in leaves and gravel, things like that. So this is really a road rider's perspective on these bikes. And you have to admit, the first thing, <laughs> the first thing you feel even on the basic MT-10 is it is breathtakingly fast. It has got just the most beautiful, creamy mid-range that I think it's going to be hard to dissuade you from buying the basic one frankly because it's just a lovely engine for the road a big thick spread of power that i'm using half throttle here i've got it in the most aggressive power delivery and it is already just putting a smile on my face it doesn't feel edgy doesn't feel scary and it sounds biblically good now the brakes that's the kind of weaker point of the MT-10. They just, they're there, the power is there, but the feed at the lever doesn't quite give you a connection to the front end that the best super nakeds do. And that's one thing I'm going to be feeling out for huh, when we get on the MT-10 SP in a minute, because that's got braided lines and they do make it a little bit of a difference. Got so much leaf crap everywhere. But just as a road bike for, you know, eight tenths bimbling, this is really sodding good. Really, really love this engine. And also the handling. Let's talk about the handling of the basic MT-10. The turn-in is not as fast as many of its competitors. It kind of rolls in, it's assured, it's consistent. What it isn't is kind of whip crack side to side fast. But that kind of gives me confidence, to be honest. It doesn't feel nervous when you tip it in. And again, for the road, this feels like a very good compromise. The ride down this road is also good. Not really feeling too many yumps and bumps, but it's quite a smooth road. It's around town and on bumpy, fast stretches where this does start to get a little bit busy in the old suspension department. 
It'll be interesting to see what my 10 feels like down here. God, I picked the worst, <laughs> the worst time of year to come down here. Everywhere you want to break or tip in is just like a mulch of wet leaves, but whatever. It's Britain. This is what biking in Britain is like most of the time. So yeah, down here, yeah, I'm being kicked out of my seat a little bit over some of these bumps. But it's not really annoying and in isolation. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, it is fast. It is fast. And people will discount this bike saying, oh, on paper it's down on power compared to its rivals. Trust me, these things are mad. But the beauty of this engine, the flexibility of it, is that you can ride all day on the torque in a high gear and think, oh yeah, this is quick, this is fast. And then you experience the very top end of the rev range, kind of 11,000 RPM and poo will be coming out of everywhere. They are so fast. But yeah, that's an interesting reintroduction to the basic MT-10. And if you rode just this bike, you would go and buy one like I did. It is phenomenally good, it sounds good. There are some, some weaknesses in the braking and things like the mirrors, which the SP doesn't actually fix. And the turning circle is um, definitely based on the R1. Can I do it? There we go. But yeah. <laughs> but it's when you've kind of revved it out in two or three gears and you need to brake, that's when the brakes need a little bit more bite, a little bit more assurance. So yeah, a very good bike, the basic MT-10. Very good, addictive, and if you can't get hold of an SP and you've only ridden this, you absolutely won't feel short-changed. I have to say, the suspension on this does feel like a good compromise for road use. It is a bit firm at times, but then that gives you some connection, and because the riding position isn't that lent forward compared to some of its super naked rivals, that does help. You've got decent tyres on this, though. You've got the Bridgestone S20Ts. They do take a little while to warm up, but when you're on a dry road and it's hot, then, honestly, you can run this thing to the edge of the tyre so easily and it feels great and it's lent over you're gonna have to take my word for it because well frankly if i lean it over now i'm gonna be getting knee down on a hedgehog so i um, won't be doing that yeah just assured just assured <laughs> oh. now electronics wise on the non-sp you've got adjustable traction control slide control lift control and you can change a couple of engine braking modes obviously you haven't got the electronic suspension so i've got fewer things at the bottom there <laughs> god it just encourages you to ride like a bell end dark side of japan more like the slightly squiffy side of guildford no it's great what a bike let's try the sp <laughs> That was a lot of fun. Let's see what changes the SP brings to the party. My GoPro is probably not even pointing the right way. It's going to have a little ride. First thing you notice is the riding position is pretty much exactly the same between the two bikes, but already I feel more connected to the road and there was actually far less dive coming off the throttle then i've got this suspension set up in automatic two mode which is kind of the goldilocks middle setting designed for road use there is a3 which is comfy and compliant and plush and great for motorways and bumpy roads and then there's a1 which is your really firm track mode now that's the thing the electronic suspension on this bike i would say is some of the best if not the best I've ever experienced purely because it's got such a broad range of adjustability it goes between firm and soft and all three automatic modes feel distinct it's not like some bikes where it's like oh is this soft or dynamic mode this you know and it just really is great for tinkering with and you do change it depending on the road and your mood it's not like some bikes i found where you just leave it in one setting and think oh why did i bother paying for this particular option pack on this there's a valid reason to switch between all of them now next up the brakes that is the next thing you'll notice switching between the two bikes these have got just a bit more sense of connection between your fingers and your rate of deceleration i find they just give you more confidence when you are 
exploring the upper reaches of second and third gear this just does a slightly better more confident job of slowing you back down which is handy because it's also sodding fast <laughs> but yeah down this bumpy road oh, it's just way more in control of its mass over these kind of undulations it's not getting away from itself not that the other bike really was but it just makes you realize how much more body control is on the table compared to the standard bike this one just feels glued down until it wheelies then it doesn't but yeah this this does feel like it's instantly riding on more compliant suspension that deals better with small imperfections in the road and irons them out so it's comfier yet it's also going to give you more confidence as well and yeah that all sounds fairly obvious but the truth back to backing it right here right now is that this bike is worth the extra for me for road riding on a soggy wet day i am feeling the benefits thank you dog people when i was riding the normal mt10 i think i said it's a really good road bike and i'm not taking it on track yet but by all accounts it's a load of fun on track but not really a lap time chasing sort of bike because it's just got a slightly more relaxed nature to its chassis but this suspension this erlin's spool valve suspension does just make it a better road bike as well so yeah if you've got the money no it's not doing conclusion yet but i think you know what i'm about to say don't you because I'm riding the one that I bought my own, with my own money. It was last night's bonfire. It was fireworks night last night. Well, I've bought my own little rocket to the party. Wait, don't drop it. Uh. Right, I've completely missed it up, but whatever. Let's get some airflow. <laughs> Brakes still aren't perfect on this. Not gonna lie, I want more bite still. And uh, a quick pad change, I think, will do that. And that is my plan. Let's put the suspension and should we go for a firmest mode let's go for firmest mode see how we get on that is a one there are manual modes as well you can set up your manual modes on this bike you've got three of those so that's basically where you can tell it how much electronic screwdriving to do in each of the modes i've not really played with that but i will do when i take it on track next year so you can set up modes oh yeah instantly instantly i feel more connected but i've got a slightly annoying connection to the road and that i can feel the bumps a lot more is ironing out less it is stiffer it is firmer and i've read some uh read some things by people who have taken this bike on track as well who are very good track riders and their essential takeaway was this goes firmer than the regular bike and it goes softer than the regular bike as well but you know you're paying an extra two and a half grand for that so you have to decide if that's worth it for you but even if you're a road rider i would say it is worth it for the reasons I've mentioned, and for the fact that our roads in the UK are, oh, yeah, I've, I've seen smaller craters on the western front, frankly. Just what a bike though. Whichever one you get, the star of the show is still the engine. Uh, so you're not going to feel shortchanged. But if you buy the normal one and you park up next to an SP, you might, you, you might feel a bit like you want one. So why not just get the SP? I'm not working for Yamaha. I'm just going through my own purchase process in my head. And I'm sorry, it's the middle of autumn, I can't magic dry tarmac. But hopefully you're getting a sense of what these bikes are like in the real world. See, I, I don't think I'd be having anywhere near as much fun on that BMW M1000R that I had the other day. It's too highly strong and it hasn't got the character this has. <laughs> this is a good, good road bike. One of the best. And I love the fact I can dive in adventure bike levels of comfort as well. Anyway, let's head back to that lay-by outside the pub. Hopefully we don't get kicked out. For an outro, for a conclusion. Right, to sum up, is the MT10 SP worth two and a half grand more than the basic bike? Well, if you're watching that bit of the video, you were seeing I was giggling like crazy on both bikes. And that's because the heart of the MT10, that engine, is the same on both of them and it is absolutely epic. For me, Yamaha's done quite a sensible thing by having the non-SP because it's a more affordable way to access the brilliant basic components of this bike. 
It's a cheap way to buy that engine, basically. Now, the SP, the suspension, does smooth things out a lot on the road. And if you like fiddling like I do, having soft, firm and all that, it is great and it is worth the entry price. And also, if you're a tart like me, I think the colour schemes on the SP, or the colour scheme, you can only get this one, is just stunning. It looks like a little R1M and I love the polished swing arm. It makes me feel really special every time I get on it. So for me, yes, I bought the right one for me. But if you can't stretch to a 16 and a half gram bike, that is one of the most fun road bikes you can buy in the UK at the moment. It is up there with the Super Dukes and the likes of that. So yeah, there's no real loser here. They're both brilliant, but if you can stretch to this, you won't be disappointed. Also, oh, this is really rare as well. There's only a couple of hundred of these in the UK in this Gen 2 spec, so it stands out. But anyway, thank you for watching. If it's been entertaining, fun, or anything else, please hit the big cartoon thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, go down to the comment, and leave me the Japanese word for frog's intestine, which is probably a delicacy, let's be honest. Anyway, I've been Tim. It's starting to rain. There's a bonfire over there because it was fireworks last night. I'm going to go home. Well, I'm not actually. I'm going to go and pick up an MT-09 SP and see if that is better than this. I don't think it will be, but we'll see. Goodbye.